right now we're in such a tough market on both sides, right? On the real estate and you know the mortgage side. And you know, I think we really need to stick together of you know great ideas and a great mindset. And so we brought in a couple of people to talk. Todd here with Love Capital. He's gonna talk about what the market looks like, what we're currently seeing, what the future looks like. And then David Lane is gonna kind of talk about the mindset around that, how to help get out of your own way, how to deal with difficult you know, times and, and these kind of things. And so it's, I would sit back, take notes if you can, some videos and these kind of things. They're gonna share a lot of great stuff for you guys. And um, you know, both of them are gonna give us a great idea of kind of looking into what, again, what the market is and how it's best performed in that market. So we'll have some Q&A afterwards and all that good kind of stuff. But yeah, again, we just uh, thank you guys for coming and excited for the Without further ado, here's Tom. Seventy-seven percent of your homes are going up. 
about an asset average of about 22%. That's ridiculous numbers. So when you take what homes are listed at, for the most part, you guys are going to be in here. Who's going to handle the Yeah. So the guys that I know that have been in this industry for a very long time know what they're doing to be successful at taking the median closed price of those homes and understanding that there's a bidding war over the last 24 months. And they're going probably 5 to 10% below where that bidding war jump those homes to because there's inventory now, there's options out there. So setting yourself apart and keeping that price in a realistic view, you guys are getting multiple options because there's still 27% of homes going above that trend. And it's those guys. And it's not because you're pricing it below value, you're just pricing it aggressively with where the market is. Okay. I can sit here and talk about where we have been over the last few years. I can talk to you why we how we got here. By the way, it's Governor Newsom to say. Um, is how, how the Fed came in, forcibly kept mortgage rates low for two terribly long, which created the housing frenzy and created the issue that we're in now, the inflationary period that we have. We all know where we're at. Now I can understand that you guys are coming into 2022, 2023 with a little bit of fear of movement and trepidation. And you've probably seen other economists, other housing experts giving their two cents. We all have opinions on it. So what I tell you here today is just take a little bit of what I say, because there's a lot of great speakers out there, and I'm just hoping that I can give you one or two little snippets as you walk out of here today. And when this event occurs, and I'm going to speak up, you're going to go, you know what? I remember that guy, that golf course, really big guy. Yeah, he said that was going to happen. Then he said, this is going to happen. Okay, so there's three directions that we could possibly go in, and they're all tied with other ones. If the Fed raises rates again, okay, you guys are all aware that we've had 275 basis point hikes in the last 90 days. It's likely that we see another 75 basis point hike uh, next month. Uh, if that occurs, then what happens to bond markets? I can tell you that the bond market, for the first two 75 basis point hikes, the bond market had already written in. That's why we started to see mortgage rates tick up prior to the fund rate coming up. That's why we saw the um, secondary bond market adjust and the spread of yield on the MBS market. The 10-year treasury right now actually has been taking downward, and that's what's keeping mortgage rates in that low five range. Okay. The reason that is happening is because we are in the midst of a recession. There's a huge demand for the 10-year treasury, which is pushing the treasury lower. So, if the Fed raises one more time, we could see rates jump up close to six. Historically, mortgage rates have flowed with the inflationary numbers. Now, the CPI core just happens to be right now at 5.1. The CPI index for all items is sitting at 9.2 right now. The good news is both the CPI and the PPI are triggering down. So what the PPI is, guys, is the producer price index. That is the cost of goods in the U.S. that we manufacture, and then the end cost of goods, and both of those are ticking down, which means the CPI will then soon follow the uh, consumer price index. Those two triggers right there could slow the Fed down on their raise. However, we also need job growth to come to an end. Sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? So here has been the Fed's game plan for the last 50 years. We have inflation. Let's raise the Fed fund rate. It's due to a liquidity issue. Now the liquidity issue, yes, we've pumped about $4 trillion into this market since Biden took office in 
the sense the pandemic started. That is part of the problem. I would argue that that is not the primary issue of inflation, however. And my hope is, is that the Fed figures out that raising the Fed fund rate is not going to impact inflation. Where is this hurting in your guys' pocketbooks right now? Where does it hurt the most when you go buy something? The gas station and the grocery store. The other commodities out there are at 5.1%. That's manageable. If fuel, anybody know the, the CPI index is on fuel? 46%. Border near hyperinflation on fuel for the past year. It's fluctuated between 36 and 58% year over year. The 46% that we're sitting on now is the 36% is sitting on top of 36% increase last year. Fuel drives inflation. Now while I am all for green energy and electric cars, not everybody can own one, because if you did, you guys turn your air conditioners on up here, you guys have black guys. If all of you have electric cars, you'd be in a permanent black guy. It just doesn't work. So the war on fossil fuels right now, and this administration's policies on fossil fuels, is really what's driving most of the inflation. Yes, there's still supply chain issues, but no matter what the Fed does with raising rates, it's not going to change things until we get the fossil fuel under control. Okay, now it's my opinion. Um, so, option two. So I'll go back to the three options because I ran. I got ADHD. I got all kinds of issues. Okay, so there's the Fed has three options. They hold steady. They lower rates, they raise rates. If they raise rates, we're going to go into a fairly good size in recession. Okay. If they drop rates, it just isn't going to happen right now. Um, it really wouldn't do too much. If we say stagnant right now, hyperinflation or the inflationary stuff will really kind of take care of its own. Because the reality is, is when something is too expensive for you to buy it, you're not going to buy it. Period. We don't have the, we don't see the value in it. Inflation takes care of itself. Until you have policies that drive inflation, then you've got a good vision. Okay. So knowing that the Fed's not going to drop rates, get that one off the table. Stay the same. There's a possibility, a very slim possibility, that they don't do much over the next six months with the Fed fund rate. Highly unlikely. Why? Because of their 50-year policy. This is the part that, well, I can't really put it anywhere. It just pisses me off. Okay, so, I'm the Fed. I'm going to make your life hell. I'm going to make 20% of you unemployed. I'm going to make your credit card payments go through the roof. So that you don't have money to buy goods, so the people that do have money can afford to buy goods. That's the plan. They won't say it, but if you look at the policy and what it does, and how destructive it is, that's what it does. At some point, my hope is they figure out it doesn't work. Okay. Do I think that we are going to see a recovery in housing? Not in the next 12 months. Okay. The next 12 months are going to be a time when you guys can get a future game plan and you get ready because there's going to be fallout in the industry. What's going to happen in 12 months? Here's what I think is going to happen in the next 12 months. Okay. The Fed is going to get pressure from the administration somewhere in the middle of 23, moving into 24. And the Fed's going to have to lower rates. The Fed fund rate is going to have to come down. Why? We're going to be in the fourth and second quarter of negative GDP growth. And as much spin as this administration wants to put on the fact that they can change the definition of what a recession is, we are in a recession right now. I don't care what they change. Negative growth two consecutive quarters has been the definition until the Biden administration. And that's we can, we can change that. It's no big deal. And they're doing it because the unemployment rate. Unemployment rate is irrelevant. Unemployment rate is completely manipulated. 
What's important is the level of employment. We are not pre-pandemic employed, period. So yes, the unemployment rate is low. It's significantly low. And that's what they're basing things on. And it's antiquated. Because the reality is we don't have the number of employees that we did pre-pandemic. And now we're starting to see layoffs. So how much pressure is the Fed going to put on the job markets? That I don't know. And if I did, I probably wouldn't be standing here because I'd make a lot more money. <laughs> What I can tell you is that when the stock market hits bottom, which I believe there's about one more drop, it's going to drop about another 30%, and then it is going to be a bull freaking run. Let's go. <laughs> so if you think about this, how many of you wish you'd bought Amazon at the, uh, say, 2002? Yeah. yeah. Um, Think about the tech stocks and how far they fall. They're going to rebound in a massive manner. And those that have cash, because cash is king in the recession, are going to do very well. What happens when all that money <clears throat> starts coming out of the tenure treasuries and back in the stock? Tenure treasuries rise. Right? But we're still going to be in a recession. We're going to have relatively high employment compared to where we're at today. This is, again, this is like 12 months. I think this is going to happen in the second to third quarter of 2020. When, when the stock market starts to recover, but we're going to have high employment. So what's the Fed going to do? The Fed's going to jump in, I believe, with another quantitative easing. One last, one last burst of the economy to try to, to save their colossal Freaking word in there. <laughs> mess that they made. Okay. And I believe, in my heart, they're going to drop the Fed fund rate to about one, about a half percent again, and they're going to jump back into the MBS market, they're going to jump back into the Treasury market, not for very long. There's going to be about a six month window where rates are possibly going to drop back down into the threes, and then they'll rise slowly over the next year back up to about 4.75, and then the whole city in there. Without housing, without the real estate industry, we are in a big recession. Housing has led us into every recession. It has led us out of every recession since the 40s. This one's no different. There's going to be a window of opportunity in there where, again, most of your competition is going to fall out of this market. They don't have a game plan set for the next 12 months. So I want to take some time and answer any questions that anybody has on anything related to the industry, or the economy, consumer sentiment. What do you want to know?
it's going to be an interesting time for sure. I mean, this industry always is. Um, and the reason I kind of compress things down, I've had this 2025 theory for a long time. I started talking about it in 2010, where I mapped out the debt, where it became unmanageable to pay back. Well, then the Fed dropped rates to zero. So that pushed it out in 2025. By the way, it's not a pretty scenario. You don't want to live in my head. <laughs> they got pushed out in 2030, right? That's when the debt is no longer paid. And so keep in mind, I'm an asset risk manager. So I get paid to go down every rabbit hole and chase every what if scenario. And there's a couple scenarios that get really ugly. And then one, one of my builders looked at me one night and took me out for a cocktail. She said, I'm not going to come listen to you speak anymore. <laughs> What's that? He goes, you give me heartburn. <laughs> and, uh, and if I lived in your head, I would go live in a cave somewhere because the world's going to fall apart. And the reality is, so I'll abbreviate, I don't want to take everybody's time here, but um, the 2030 scenario, the debt payment guys, set to be a trillion dollars. Trillion. Now, much we bring in tax revenue? Three trillion. Three point, well, probably three point seven this year. Three point seven. So roughly twenty-eight percent, twenty-nine percent will go towards debt. Why do you think the government just hired eighty-seven thousand new IRS agents? So um, there's some definite challenges ahead, for sure. Um, but going through three of these now in my career. There are always familiar faces. And we're going to have some, some good analogies, some good stories here for you um, moving through this. And keep in mind, so some of you might be a little bit more scared. My job is not to scare you. My job is to prepare you. It's not going to be easy. Um, but the market will turn. And when your clients, we were talking about this, a little bit earlier. When your clients talk to you guys about what's happening in the market, I hope you take a little snippet from what I say, you take a little snippet from other economists of what they say, and you start to gain your knowledge base on that, and maybe just a little bit different perspective on what might occur, because there's nothing that's hard to stone. And just think about that client, right? So you flash forward 12 months from now, and you've gone to a client and said, hey, I listen to this interesting speaker. So you really kind of anticipate the Fed plummeting rates again 12 months from now. And I've noticed that they're starting to tick down. I've noticed that the stock market starting to recover right now. And he's kind of anticipating that these, these the Fed fund rate and the 10-year treasuries might be dropping down lower. And the moment that the Fed enters into a quantitative easing, it is time to buy. It is an absolute time to buy. And if your client heard you talk about that, who's your client going to call when they go, I need to buy a house. I need a mortgage. If you have clients that are hesitant even now about buying a house, or they're hesitant on getting a 5.25% mortgage, my word, why? There's a scenario where they can go to seven. It's more than likely that they go up to six and then drop right back down at some point. So you'll get an opportunity to refi. If they don't come back down, but you're going to wait until the market tanks, that you're going to pay seven and a half or seven percent mortgage rate? No. You buy now, it's a great time to buy. Why? You can pick your house. You have negotiating power. You're negotiating with the seller, you're not negotiating with other buyers. Well, I'm, so, just so you all know, got divorced two years ago. I lived in the woods. You know how. But I'm buying another, I'm buying a primary house again, and I'm buying it in November. Why? Because the fourth quarter gives me the best negotiating power. Mortgage rates are still going to be at a reasonable rate. And I'm pretty damn confident they're going to come down and I'll be buying all half the house that I want, not the house I could get. Thank you. Okay. So, if you're dealing with savvy investors that is purchasing um, to rent, so they're not.
not getting the best interest rates from you. I would like to know maybe also from a timing point of view, where can you still have your options on the property as well as a good investment rate? That, you know, honestly, that is going to be so site specific because you've got different cap rates in different geographical regions. Um, rents are still going up; they're up about 16% year over year. I don't anticipate that continuing. I think they might go up maybe two to three percent, and then potentially come down about three to four percent in a year again. Um, when buyers flood out of the rental market again, which again. My guess is it's going to be 12 to 18 months from now. When that happens, then we'll start to see rental rates get a little bit more reasonable. So it's odd, and I'm sorry I can't have a more specific answer for that. It's, it all just depends on the cap rate. Do you have any data to share with us on how BlackRock and Vanguard buy in all these communities now? Is it going to impact the real estate market in the future and now? Yeah, so my understanding is right now that they have stopped purchasing. Um, and to be honest, I think BlackRock's going to be in a little bit of trouble. They are significantly invested in China, and the Chinese real estate market is about to absolutely insane. There are bank runs going on right now in China. I didn't want to get into that too much because there could be a ripple effect into the U.S. And that's just a whole other rabbit hole. But they're 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 exposed for I want to say a few hundred million, if not close to a billion dollars in China. I don't know the exact number, but the whole the entire Chinese real estate market is going to collapse. So if you guys don't know the way the Chinese market works, you've got buyers that come in and they write a purchase sale agreement on a unit or a house. They start making payments immediately while it's under construction. They finance the construction. Construction stopped during COVID. Last month, thousands upon thousands of Chinese buyers got tired of making those payments because the houses aren't in construction, the buildings aren't in construction. So they've stopped making the payments. Now the developers can't make the payments to the banks. The community banks were charging too much interest on their deposits to try to attract depositors. And now they can't pay the interest to their depositors and they ponzi that money, so now they're broke. They don't have the money. They've locked down the banks. They've locked down people's funds. Um, and it's only going to get worse over the next six to 12 months. So, yeah, sorry, rabbit holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, are you going to start seeing some short sales maybe um, or foreclosures? I don't think we're going to see foreclosures again. First off, so Freddie and Ginny, Fanny, all have agreements with very large hedge funds that as soon as those homes go into default, those notes get sold. So they're not even going to hold. Um, and my guess is, even with the amount of equity that people have in their homes right now, they are going to sell their house versus going to bankruptcy. Now, there is a scenario that, you know, again, what is? What happens if unemployment goes up to eight, nine, ten percent? Yeah, then absolutely. Do I think it will go up to 25% like it was? No, it would probably go up to 10. Right now, we're at historic lows. We're down below, I think, 2% right now. That's what I believe we got uh, for foreclosure rates. So no, we're not, we're definitely not gonna see that. We're not gonna see flats go back to the banks from, from developers. Um, that gets into market market accounting, on the price of our Cooper, our in front of Congress to get that done, which is really what threw us into the tailspin in 2008. Not going to happen. The other thing is, why are we going to see inventory rise to historic levels or even higher than, say, the, the last 10 year average? It's because everybody refined 2.25 to 3.25. No one's going to walk away from that. If mortgage rates do hit six, who in their right mind is going to walk away from a 3% mortgage rate for a six? They're not. There are people that are going to have to. And there's, you know, the, the sales velocities are going to be down. That's why, again, 
have a game plan because your competition is going to go away. Don't give up. Don't give up because it will turn. Thank you guys. Thank you.